welcome to Seeing Through Glass. Yes, it's finally the video that you've all been waiting for from this year's Car Week. We're finally checking out Philip's McLaren Senna. Boys and girls, for those of you that may not have seen him before, this is Philip. What a fine looking fellow. <laughs> Welcome back to the channel. You are the most popular person on my entire channel. Do you know that? I'm the reason your channel exists. Yeah, I think you do know that. You've become <laughs> arrogant with it and it's annoying me, but I love having you on the channel. So welcome back. Now, uh, lots of you m might have seen this car on social media. It's become social media famous um, because Philip is now on Instagram. <laughs> um, but you may have missed some of the intricate details. So Phil's now going to walk around and point out some of the stuff you might have missed because, as always, he's gone very bespoke and custom. I'm going to allow you to stop standing there awkwardly now in front of your car. <laughs> Please show us these intricate details. <laughs> well, we'll start at the front. I think one of the coolest bits is the heritage badge from the McLaren F1. Mine's a little bit different because I don't do the double line, but I just think it suits the car and it harks back to the earlier days of the company. Um, the color is really special. The color is uh, called Oak Green Metallic, and it's a Porsche color. Sorry, McLaren. Um, it was created by Ferry Porsche, and it's what he put on all of his cars. Um, from there, we go into something that was quite tricky. The entire door is actually visual carbon, and it was just to continue this, uh, this kind of waterfall line down the side of the car that spills onto the uh, side panel. And I saw a rendering somebody did, and I thought, wow, that's really cool. I want to see if we can do it. They hadn't seen the rest of the car, so they didn't know how it worked. It took us a long time to figure out how to get the side of the car right, but I think we did it. Now let's open up the door. The most famous part of this car is probably the Kiwi, affectionately known as Bruce. Um, it's in honor of uh, Bruce McLaren. He put it on his cars. I put the original fat Kiwi on my Project Kilo 1650S and then I saw a lot of people using the same Kiwi and I wanted something that no one else would use. So I commissioned the guys from McLaren Tuned, which if you haven't seen you should watch, a fantastic animation of all the, uh, all the drivers and the Formula One history of McLaren uh, to make me this wonderful little guy and he's great fun. I also put never lift on the accelerator pedal. It's a downforce car. If you lift, you'll probably die. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, just a gentle reminder. Uh, and honestly, the seats, some people will say, why didn't you do Alcantara? But the seats hold you so tightly, especially when you're a man of ample proportions. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's a, uh, carry on. <laughs> <laughs> Don't touch it. Don't Roman shame me. Statue. Don't shame Roman me. Statue. That's what I was going for. Um, and, and I just thought the green and tan combo is such a beautiful thing. Uh, why not do it? One special MSO thing that I did add that you won't see on most cars, uh, you might not see on any other car because they may not like it, is this. So that is a little magnetized strap. And basically I put it there because my father is quite small and he always complains about not being able to reach the door in my 650 and I knew he wouldn't be able to reach the door in this. But it's also helpful because I have harnesses in this car for tracking it, which I will be doing shortly. And if you're harnessed in and you pull off into the pits at a racetrack, the first thing you do is open the door to talk to whoever's trying to talk to you. And unless you have someone there to close the door for you, you won't be able to reach it unless you undo your harnesses, which is just a nuisance really, because you're really belted in tight and if you're wearing a Hans, it doesn't really help. So this is just a little magnetized strap that works just like that and hides away. We'll go to the back of the car, which has a couple more funky little bits. Uh, the first thing you might spot is the two-piece exhaust instead of the famous three-piece exhaust. This is now known as the federalized exhaust for the US and the other and the countries non-EU that don't have the same emissions and sound regulations. The third exhaust in the EU is for a quieter exhaust for speeds un under a certain speed. I think it's under 60 kilometers an hour. I'm not quite sure. Um, 
The sad thing about those cars is, like this car, my exhaust is already bluing. Their two top exhausts will go blue, but their lower exhaust will never go blue. So, I agree, I think it looks kind of funky without the third exhaust, and I did really like the third exhaust, but I'd rather have both of my exhausts go blue than have two blue and one not. Um, and of course, just like the first Project Kilo, we did a gold heat shield because McLaren F1 is the most awesome car ever. One day, I aspire to having one. It would be amazing. <laughs> well, I have to say, if your career of being an international playboy <laughs> ever goes horribly wrong, you could be a YouTuber. What a fantastic presentation <laughs> of your Senna, Philip. Thank you so much. <laughs> um, now, viewers will know that I, I haven't been that enamoured with the looks of this car a as of yet. Um, this is the first time I've really got up close with one. I do have to say, he and I will admit... <laughs> well, he loves it We are friends, so I'm always going to be kind, but this spec in particular does really really work. I mean, you know I'm a fan of green cars, but I think the tan interior was a genius decision, and... Well, the seen through glass. Hello. Uh, you know, Come on, you just... Yeah. You had to do it. You've got to go tan interior, it's life. <laughs> um, and so spending some time following this car around the wonderful Monterey area has made me... I, it's starting to appeal to me slightly. But anyway. It's a very early start today, and we're both very busy men during car week, so we've, we've had to get up at 7am um, to, to come and film Philip's car, and I made him promise that if we did that, he would take me to Starbucks um, and he's driving well that's the thing <laughs> so that was a little bit of information I hadn't told you yet um, he said okay fine but you got to drive so I'm gonna drive a Senna to Starbucks if I was a clickbait youtuber that would be the title of this video but it's not so <laughs> it's not ah, no, it, it's, it's not that easy to get in is it no nope, nope. <laughs> You will notice because there's no boot in the Senna, with it being a, a, essentially a race car, um, Phil's having to squeeze my camera bag by his feet. Is that right? For a bloody Starbucks. <laughs> or for a Starbucks. Hey, and for a YouTube video. <laughs> Hashtag content. Okay. Oh, let me do that as well. I'm going to use your little tag. Mm. Since, you, since you paid all that money for <laughs> having little pieces of ribbon that I could have made you. Um, um, anyway, you okay. want to know the sneaky thing? What? They gave it to me for free. <laughs> I don't know if you should say that on camera. <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry. I can edit that out if you need me to. <laughs> don't send your assassins. They're everywhere. Okay, so I just I, I need to do boring stuff. Do you? Initial impressions. Um, the glass in here is quite welcoming because it really creates this kind of open cabin. Obviously, we've driven to this location from Philip's house, so I have spent some time in this car already this morning, about five minutes. Um, but that's something I just wanted to, to clarify very quickly. These side windows are pointless but quite fun. You know, everyone, oh, so you can see the apex. You can't. The apex is, should be over there. If the <laughs> apex is here, you're doing something wrong. Yes. Um, uh, otherwise, lots of this is very familiar to the 720S, as you would expect, considering this car is based... Uh, yeah, uh, loosely. Uh, loosely based on the 720. So a lot of the screens, the steering wheel, some of the switch gear is 720 based. However, we have this lovely floating screen here. Um, this, the drive, neutral, reverse, launch, etc., moves with the seat. So do you mind if I... Please. Don't know if you can see that. Moving. <laughs> um, now, what else do we have to say? Not much. Start button is up here, which is quite fun. Um, quite fun? It's amazing! <laughs> That's just because it reminds me of your helicopter. Star her up! Okay. It's like a Miss Emma Walsh video, isn't it? No, the helicopter has a regular key. Oh. <laughs> Good point. Not a key, key. Um, but yeah, apart from that, it, it's definitely a proper sense of occasion. I've never been in a P1. Ah. So I can't, I can't relate that, but... So I've only been in a P1 once, mm -hmm. and the biggest difference I can say is that there's more headroom. When I got in the P1, I felt quite claustrophobic. The roof glass is very close to your head, and that's why they put the roof glass in, because it makes uh, you feel a little more spacious. Uh, you forget about it almost immediately, but initial, initial reaction is that it is claustrophobic. And for me, the doors bring just a little more light into the cabin, mm. and that's all they're good for, in my opinion. But yeah, yeah, but it just feels like there's so much space yeah. for activities. <laughs> all the activities. So many activities. <laughs> um, now, you might be like, oh, come on, Sam, just get on with it, start up the car, go for a drive. The reason we haven't done that yet is it's incredibly noisy in here. I, do, I mean, it makes sense. We're in a carbon tub with basically no soundproofing. Once this thing starts up and once we get rolling, I'm not sure if you're going to be able to hear us that well. I do have an additional microphone in here. I'm going to shout just to be safe. Don't feel like you have to. <laughs> what you say is often useless anyway. But oh. <laughs> I'm joking. Um, anyway, so here we go. Right, so just 
usual start-up procedure, right? Yeah. Foot on the brake. Oh, very hard. I forgot the yeah, McLaren's classic. Oh, no. Almost there. <laughs> you wait, broke it. Wait. Parking brake fault. No, just hit the button. Okay. <laughs> if, the, if this had been the first of your cars that I'd broken, I would have been like, come on! Uh, anyway, there you go, yes, very, very noisy. Um, so we're going to try and stick with it. But, right, uh, parking brake off. Uh, we'll stick in. I'm going to go active on, but I'm going to go yeah. comfort, comfort, comfort for now, because this is a ridiculously powerful car. It was the first time driving it, so... Um, also, it's really stiff. Really <laughs> stiff. So I think comfort suspension is much needed. Yes. Now... Okay. Um, most of my audience will know you for your classics. I feel very uncomfortable Do you? Right now. <laughs> have you been in the passenger seat? You have been in the passenger seat. <laughs> I mean, listen to this noise. That is just stone... Wow. Can you hear us? <laughs> I'm not the guy who goes and buys every supercar. It's not quite my style. I'd rather buy old cars. Well, that's exactly it. That's what I was trying to say, is that my audience will know you for your classics. Um, so it's a little bit quirky, I guess, for you to end up in something like this. How, how did you get to that point? Why, why did you decide that this was the supercar you wanted? Or hypercar? Well, okay, McLaren as a brand, I'll put it to you like this. I think a lot of people love Ferrari for the mystique of the brand, but I prefer their old cars. Um, I think Lamborghini is great if you're an extrovert. Sure. And we haven't got enough tattoos for Lamborghini too. <laughs> but McLaren, if you like to go to the racetrack, they take care of you. You know, they've got pre and post track inspection, all that stuff. Um, and I, I, I have a 650S that I love. I wanted a track car for the US that I can drive to the track and drive home. And I didn't need an entire team of people to run. I didn't need to trailer it. I didn't need wheel guns. I didn't need the whole thing. And honestly, as I'm sure of you, you guys have already seen, my dad has amazing cars that he shares with me. I have my Stratos that I love to drive. And those are much more of an occasion when I want to go for a drive. Um, this is really if I just want to be in something modern with air conditioning, or if I want to go to a racetrack, that's what this car is for. This is your comfy daily. <laughs> you please, that's basically what you just said. The Stratos is the occasion. This is your daily. <laughs> You're a madman. Maybe sort of, yeah. somewhat like that, yes. Track focus, yeah. <laughs> well, I can report that at these speeds, um, it's already incredibly stiff, incredibly focused, yeah. quite brutal, quite raw. And it feels like it wants to be. I, I mean, I feel like I'm driving a race car. I really do feel like I'm driving a race car, and I've done nothing yet apart from winning this cruiser idle down a hill. Yeah, it, it definitely has more of a feeling of a race car than any road car, modern road car I've ever driven. Have you been in a Ford GT? I have not. We're going to talk about that very shortly when we turn around and blast back up this hill. Bear with us. I'm going to step up a level, if you will allow me. I'm going to stay in comfort suspension. <laughs> Good it's idea. Too, it's too early. <laughs> I'm going sport powertrain. <sighs> now, the reason I said, have you been in a Ford GT is, funnily enough, it does remind me of that sort of environment, that very focused, racy environment. The noise, the brutality, it's got something similar. I, I'm sure it does. I've only sat in one. And I can say this has a lot more space than yeah, 4GT. Yes. 4GT, you sit on the other person's lap. Yeah. Uh, I, I feel like I'm driving within about 4% of this car at the moment, and I'm going faster than I've been in anything else. <laughs> <laughs> I'm now going to try an acceleration. I'm going to do a third gear pull. I don't want to go any lower, because I think I'll try. <laughs> but uh, ladies and gentlemen, here is Sam from Seeking Through Glass doing his first set of acceleration. If we don't see you ever again, we're in a field. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Wow. Wow. Were you?
you short shifting there? Oh yes, I was short shifting and I was at about 40% accelerator. I did, that was not flat out, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> okay, now we have some corners I have to... Thank you so much for this! <laughs> it's just dawned on me I'm driving New York Center! I've got some press cars, guy, or whatever. Wow. I'm glad to share it, dude. You are far too generous. I mean, it's not the, the difference between this and a 720, because the 720 is ballistic as well, but the immediate differences are, because this is so raw, yeah. it, it gives a very different impression in terms of its speed and its ability. Because the 720 is fundamentally a GT car, so you're always in comfort, no matter how fast you're going, it's very comfortable speed. This is like, okay! okay. <laughs> it, it feels lighter than any other McLaren I've driven, including the P1. Including the P1. Including the P1. It, you know, it's, it's a P1 without a hybrid, with a bit more aero, and better brakes and better suspension. It's, it's the evolved kind it's a of better, version. better car. <laughs> and, and, you know, it, it, the shifts in the P1 are seamless, because you've got that hybrid fill. This gives you, you know, an angry kind of Lamborghini-esque shift. Yes, absolutely. Do I dare try track mode or am I not allowed as a first? Am I allowed? Just get in there. Really? How oh, team? Now, oh, we're, we're doing the strange comfort suspension <laughs> track, track uh, powertrain. It's showing our age. We're growing yeah. up. Okay, I'm going to hold back here. It, it does make sense, though. <laughs> oh, right, no. We haven't even had the Starbucks yet, but here we go. <laughs> Track mode. Oh my lord. This thing, dude. <laughs> <laughs> my favorite thing about this experience so far is I can't see the car from the outside. <laughs> but my spec. <laughs> Isn't it hashtag spec, spec golds? <laughs> it could be spec golds. I do still think it's a hideous car. I'm sorry, I, I, we're good enough friends that I can say that to you. I think the spec does make it look better, but I just think it's still very unattractive. I'll, I'll put it to you in two ways. I think McLaren set themselves up badly with their launch colors. Sure. And I think if they had gone for something darker and more neutral, the initial impression for the world would have been different. Fair enough, that makes sense. I'm, I'm kind of with you there. I also think that this is not a pretty car, but it's purposeful. I've likened it to putting lipstick on a pig with this spec. <laughs> um, I don't know how everyone feels about that. I often put lipstick on a pig to make it look better. <laughs> but, um, it, it, you know, it's that phrase. It's, you know, it's not that pretty, but we've managed to do something to make it a little bit better. I just can do one more accelerator because I know we're going to do a driver change in a second. I just want to get one more out of my system. Do it. All the way up. in my entire life. How did that happen? <laughs> but okay, so that big that wing. is the big wing. that is the unsanitized excitement that I think has been missing from some McLaren. I completely agree with that. Wow. I, I'm still upset with the way it looks, so I'm gonna keep saying I'm not gonna change my opinion there. You have smashed the spec. Um, but I, I understand <laughs> the appeal and why it kind of works. I, I think uh, you wouldn't have it as your one car garage, but anyone who's buying a car of this level is very unlikely to have only one car in their garage. Um, but as a sort of big play thing, and something to drive to the track, thrash around the track and then drive home, yeah. you're gonna have fun. I feel like such an <laughs> idiot now. <I> feel, <laughs> the last three months I've been like, what is that car? What's the point in it? And yeah, now I You totally... have no idea how much grief <laughs> that man has given me since I told him I was getting one of these. <laughs> but I still wouldn't buy one. You know what? Personal, different strokes for different folks. Absolutely. Personal opinion, I still want to buy, but 
I totally understand. I now understand it a lot better. I wouldn't buy a 360. <laughs> Get me to Starbucks. I'm done with this. So yes, it's been an eye-opening experience with this car and, and I will admit I have to eat my words for a lot of things that I've already said. I, it's not one for me. It is very similar on the road to the 4 GT, at least my experience of the 4 GT. I will say that. A lot of you slagged me off in the video a couple of days ago saying, oh, it's nothing like it. And I, I think the Senna would eat the 4 GT around a track, but on the road, very similar characteristics. Um, but yeah, huge thanks, as always, to this man. If you want to follow him, he is now an Instagrammer. Uh, so I'll put a link to Philip's page below. Um, and yeah, make sure you're... Uh, give the video... Uh, what am I saying? I need my coffee! Thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe for plenty more videos. And yeah, love you, Starbucks. Bye! <laughs>